हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू मेडिसिन पी वाई की टॉपिक सीरीज एंड विद जस्ट फ्यू डेज लेफ्ट फॉर द एग्जाम आई वांटेड टू टच दिस टॉपिक ऑफ एंटी ट्यूबोकुलर ड्रग्स बिकॉज यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट एटलीस्ट वन टू टू क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम फार्माकोलॉजी और मेडिसिन पार्ट एंड दीज आर क्वेश्चन विच यू कैनॉट एफोर्ड टू मेक मिस्टेक्स सो आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू कवर दिस टॉपिक Uh, we will not be discussing the entire tuberculosis in this topic but we will be talking about the main first line drugs and certain second line drugs and also the regimens which are available uh, so that you can answer the pharmac part and the medicine part so let's get started so the pyq questions which have come in almost every year are as follows so the first question multi drug resistant tb mdr tb shows resistant to which of the following drugs and following are the options second question a tuberculosis patient on anti tubercular treatment presents with a tingling sensation and paresthesia in the lower limbs he is not a diabetic and occasionally consumes alcohol which of the following vitamins must be supplemented to this patient and following are the options next question a female patient on ocps was diagnosed to have tuberculosis and started on att she was advised to use an additional barrier method of contraception what is the reason for this advice and last question which of the following is an inhibitor of rna synthesis and following are the options so uh, we'll get back to this questions let us quickly go through the drugs so if we see this table it comprises mainly the first line drugs that is hrze we all know so we'll just quickly go through these drugs and the relevant points so first isoniazid the mechanism of action uh, it is bactericidal and it blocks mycolic acid synthesis then rifampicin it is also bactericidal it has maximum bactericidal properties and mechanism of action is inhibition of rna polymerase leading to inhibition of rna synthesis so it is a inhibitor of rna synthesis then pilazinamide it is also a bactericidal drug its action is inhibition of fatty acid synthase 1 leading to inhibition of cell membrane lastly ethambutol it is a bacteriostatic so this is a differentiating point where all hrz is bactericidal e is bacteriostatic and its action is inhibition of arabinosyl transferases leading to a reduction in arabinogalactin needed for the cell wall so here it is bacteriostatic if you see the metabolism hrz is liver with maximum metabolism for rifampicin in liver in ethambutol it is kidney for location of mycobacteria you can remember that for out of four drugs the first two have both intracellular and extracellular and the later two have either of one where ethambutol can be remembered with the first letter e so extracellular pyrazinamide i so intracellular whereas isoniazid and rifampicin both have intracellular and extracellular location for unique side effects this is a very important part and this can be asked as questions so for isoniazid the unique side effects are shoulder hand syndrome and cns side effects like neuritis and also hepatitis uh, this could be remembered as isoniazid is inh where n and h stands for neuritis and hepatitis then rifampicin r for reddish orange urine sweat and tears and P for P40 induction that is an enzyme inducer then pyrazinamide it is most hepatotoxic and hyperuricemia is the side effects then ethambutol E for eyes you can remember the side effects in the eyes that is optic neuritis so these are the unique side effects of these four drugs which need to be remembered and it's very frequently asked question in the neat pg coming to the mechanism of resistance this is also important for hrze uh, isoniazid is cat g which is the most severe and inh a Rifampicin is RPOB, pyrazinamide is PNCA, and ethambutol is EMBB. This is very simple. You can pick it up with the help of the initials of the each drug, and you just have to remember for rifampicin is very important RPOB. Now coming to the classification based on drug resistance. So these are very simple terms. We just have to follow the words. So first mono resistant. Uh, so it is single resistant. So it is resistant to one first line anti tuberculosis drug. only then poly drug resistance the word says poly so it is more than one so it is resistant to more than one first line anti tuberculosis drug other than rifampicin then rifampicin resistant as the word says rifampicin so it is resistant to rifampicin with or without resistant to any other drugs then multi drug resistant this is very important uh, here there are multi drugs both isoniazid and rifampicin have to be present and extensively drug resistant are multi drug resistant patients which are additionally resistant to fluoroquinolones like ofloxacin levofloxacin or moxifloxacin and at least one of the three injectable second line drugs either amikacin carnamycin or capromycin i hope these terms are clear and this could be potential one liner questions so you should be very thorough with this now coming to the regimens so there are two main regimens uh, one is drug sensitive regimen one is drug resistant regimen so drug sensitive regimen is very easy and it's a very simple one where uh, newly and previously treated cases both sensitive to isoniazid and rifampicin uh, there are two phases 
intensive phase and continuation phase where we give for two months hrze and for a continuation phase we give for four months hre so this is very common and very simple this is for drug sensitive regimen for drug resistant regimen we have three regimens one is isoniazid mono resistant or poly drug resistant where rifampicin is not resistant either isoniazid single or more than one drug is resistant other than rifampicin so we go for levofloxacin rifampicin etamutol and pyrazinamide for 6 months for mdr tb there is a shorter regimen and there is a longer regimen for shorter regimen there is two phases intensive and continuation phase uh, where intensive phase is uh, for 4 to 6 months and continuation phase for 5 months a total of around 9 to 11 months for intensive phase we use moxifloxacin bidaquelin for 6 months clofazimin pyrazinamide we can use high dose isoniazid etamutol and etionamide and for continuation phase we continue the patient on moxifloxacin clofazimin pyrazinamide and etamutol coming to the longer mdr tb regimen which is mainly used for xdr tb patients so bidaquelin again for 6 months or longer mainly 6 months then levofloxacin linezolid clofazimin and cyclosanin this could be easily remembered by 2l 2c and bidaquelin and it is of a duration 18 to 20 months so this is about drug resistant regimen lastly a little bit about the newer drugs which is bidaquelin delamanid and pitomanid so bidaquelin is a diarrheal quinolone group mechanism of action is atp synthase inhibition this could be a potential question uh, side effect is q2 prolongation and it is mainly used in drug resistant tb delamanid and pitomanid both are nitroimidazole groups uh, and mechanism of action is mycolic acid synthesis inhibition and side effect is same as bidaquelin qt prolongation and use is drug resistant tb a uh, pitomanid side effect is peripheral neuropathy which is different from delamanid So let us go back to the question which came. The first question which came was multi-drug resistant TB. It is MDR TB shows resistant to which of the following drugs? So it's a very straightforward question. It's isoniazid and rifampicin. Then second question: A tuberculosis patient on ATT presents with a tingling sensation and paresthesia in the lower limbs. He is not a diabetic and occasionally consumes alcohol. Which of the following vitamins must be supplemented to this patient? So uh, this is definitely a side effect of one of the drugs of ATT. and uh, patient is complaining of tingling sensation in paresthesia which is a known side effect of isoniazid uh, also they have ruled out that patient is not a diabetic and occasionally consumes alcohol now which of the vitamins must be supplemented to this patient so we know isoniazid inhibits pyridoxal phosphate that is vitamin b6 which is a cofactor in conversion of glutamate to gaba and since this conversion is not taking place because of the inhibition glutamate activity goes up leading to all these symptoms hence the correct answer here is vitamin b6 which should be supplemented Uh, whenever a patient started on ATT, otherwise these complications come up. Coming to the third question, a female patient on OCPs was diagnosed to have tuberculosis and started on ATT. She was advised to use an additional barrier method of contraception. What is the reason for this advice? Uh, option A, teratogenic. Option B, failure of ATT. Option C, rifampicin decreases OCP metabolism. Uh, option D, rifampicin induces OCP metabolism and causes failure. so we know uh, rifampicin is a very prime drug of ATT and it is also an enzyme inducer since it induces the metabolism so option d looks the best answer here where rifampicin is inducing ocp metabolism that is it is increasing the ocp metabolism and causing failure hence the patient is always advised to use an additional barrier method of contraception so the best answer here is option d the last question which of the following is an inhibitor of rna synthesis so this is also a direct question and uh, let us first look at the other options so 5 fluorouracil uh, it is a thymidylate synthesis inhibitor so that rules out nitrofurantoin causes reactive metabolites that causes damage of dna so it is not an rna synthesis inhibitor then novobiosin it inhibits bacterial dna gyrase again that is not a rna synthesis inhibitor so the best answer here is rifampicin which is an inhibitor of rna synthesis a direct question so this was all about the anti tubercular drugs their mechanism of action their side effects and uh, a little bit about the regimens newer drugs and resistant patterns i hope this video will be useful before going to the exam and i hope you are studying well solving mcqs till then keep studying keep revising stay focused and wish you all the best cheers